Hello viewers, welcome to your channel Pharmacypedia. This is Dr. Shikha Chauhan and in this session we are going to discuss another topic from the subject Social and Preventive Pharmacy BPharm 8 Sam. And the topic is about the social and the health education. So in this session we will be covering the food in relation to nutrition and health along with the balanced diet. So we are going to study the impact of food, nutrition and a healthy balanced diet on the social and health aspects of any individual if you have still not subscribed to my channel pharmacypedia please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia for getting further updates so without wasting the time let us begin first let us try to understand what we are going to discuss in this session that we will be discussing and laying the focus on the food in relation to nutrition and health balanced diet in my subsequent sessions i will be sharing and discussing about the nutritional deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, malnutrition and its prevention. So first let us try to understand the official definition for food. So any substance which when taken into the body or any organ may be used either to supply energy or build a tissue. So it simply states that anything which provides you energy or helps you in preparing and building up a tissue can be referred to as food. So as per Nigel 1989, anything that is eaten, drunk or absorbed for maintenance of life, growth and repair of the tissues is referred to as the food. Now, what is nutrition and diet? So, diet refers basically to as food and drink regularly being consumed. As per other definitions, it talks about the total oral intake of a substance that provides you nourishment. Or it is the total intake of a substance that furnishes the nourishment of the calories. So, diet comprises of many things taken together and their oral intake should provide you nourishment and build up of the calories. Now let us try to understand that nutrition. So nutrition talks about the sum process in the growth, maintenance and repair of living body as a whole or its constituent parts. As per WHO, nutrition is the science of food and its relationship to health. It is basically concerned primarily with the part played by the nutrient in the body growth, development and maintenance. Talking about the balanced diet. This you have studied in your earlier classes as well. So it simply talks about a diet which is defined as one which contains a variety of foods in such quantities and proportions that the need for the energy, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, fats, carbohydrates and other nutrients is adequately met for maintaining the health, vitality and general well-being and also at the time makes a small provision for extra nutrients to withstand the short durations of leanness. So it provides you the complete energy to sustain your body. Then balanced diet. So the daily requirement for protein should be met. It should be de designed accordingly. So it actually amounts to about 15 to 20 percent of your da daily energy intake. Now fat requirement should be limited to 20 to 30 percent. Carbohydrate rich in natural fiber should constitute remaining energy intake along with the requirements of micronutrients should be met. So these are the critical components of the balanced diet and they have to be proportions have to be set accordingly. Talking about the proteins, so the most desired content for the growing children and for the adults is proteins because it helps us to repair the tissues, build up the tissues. So proteins are basically the complex organic nitrogenous compounds composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur in varying amounts. So you have studied them in detail so I am going to discuss in nutshell now. So there are basically 24 amino acids out of which 9 are essential amino acids and the remaining are the non-essential amino acids. So the various food sources for the animal sources, vegetable sources are listed out being here. Then talking about the assessment of protein nutrition state, this is very important because the best measure for the state of protein nutrition is probably serum albumin concentration. So by measuring the serum albumin concentration, you can have the assessment of the protein nutrition status of any individual. So ideally, it should be more than 3.5 grams per deciliter. A, gra a level of 3.5 grams per deciliter is considered a mild degree of malnutrition. A level of 3 is considered severe malnutrition. 
then the functions of proteins you are all aware about the functions of proteins it helps in body building repair and maintenance of body tissues synthesis of certain substances like antibodies plasma proteins hemoglobin enzymes hormones and coagulation factors so proteins are connected with the immune mechanism talking about the preventive protein energy malnutrition now you there are two diseases which are associated with the protein deficiency first is the marasmus and kwashiorkor so it basically happens due to inadequate intake of proteins in the quantity and the quality so infections like other infections like diarrhea measles respiratory infections may also take place so it is a vicious circle of infections leading to malnutrition and further leading to repeated infections so sometimes the cause may be attributed to the environmental conditions poor sanitation poor maternal health failure of lactation and unhealthy diet now how to what is the indicator and how to prevent it so the first indicator of protein deficiency is underweight phenylketone urea and nutritional level diseases are the other effects of the protein malnutrition now what is the preventive measures so one has to be particular and related to the health promotion so certain instructions are being provided to the pregnant and the lactating women for the promotion of the breastfeeding then followed by the measures to improve the overall family diet followed by the nutrition education family planning and spacing of the births then family environment has to be built up other preventive measures involves specific protection which includes protein and energy rich diets immunization food fortification early diagnosis and treatment because early diagnosis and tre treatment is very important as early as you uh, diagnose the disease then you can have the treatment accordingly then periodic surveillance early treatment of the infections and diarrhea deworming of heavily infested children development of feeding programs during epidemics so overall diet improvements will uh, help to avoid these diseases now the, the, this is the list of all the vitamins and their def deficiency disorder for example vitamin a deficiency causes blindness loss of vision so so subsequently all these vitamin requirements are very much required so vitamin a is generally referred to as the retinol or retinoic acid so it contributes to the formation of retinal pigments which are needed for the vision so it is necessary for maintaining the integrity and normal functionings of the glands and epithelial tissues so it supports the skeletal tissue vitamin a is very much required so these are the various sources of the vitamin a now the vitamin a sources have been listed out and the this is associated with the vitamin a deficiency is the zero ophthalmia now night blindness conjunctival xerosis by tot spots corneal xerosis so due to the deficiency of vitamin a you get you can have several diseases so one must be particular about the intake of the vitamin a so this is one of the disease zero ophthalmia which is associated with the deficiency of vitamin a and it can even cause blindness in children below 3 years so risk factor included are the poor nutrition ignorance faulty feeding practices infections particularly measles and diarrhea thank you so much for watching my video please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia for getting further updates and information about the pharmacy contents thank you so much